We're beginning a series entitled Unqualified. You know, we have to qualify for a loan. You have to qualify for a job. You have to qualify to join the military. You have to be qualified to teach in the public school. You have to qualify to get in the Olympics. There are tryouts if you want to join a team. It seems like you have to have a good credit score, IQ, good blood pressure, vital signs, emotional stamina. In every area, we have to be qualified. And I think sometimes we think spiritually, many of us, we're unqualified. There's good news. The Bible says that God does not look on the outside God looks on the inside. God has a different measuring standard than does the world. Feeling unqualified, and, and truly many of us are that way. We, we, just, we feel like that we're just not all that we could and should be, and God can and won't use us. Feeling unqualified makes you feel like you're on the spiritual standby list. You know, God will only use you if he has nobody else, you're kind of the last resort. Feeling unqualified will put you in a place of begging and not believing. It puts you in a place of trying to appease God and not please God. You feel like you're under the reprimand of God. But I want you to know you are God's first choice. Let me say that again. That's good news. You are God's first choice. You may feel unqualified, but I want you to hear the opinion of God. God can and God will use you. There is something that God has said, you're the perfect person to fill that and meet that need. I want you to join me in the New Testament, the book of Luke chapter 5. Now, I'm going to read several verses that are not going to come on the screen because I want to set the scene. Let me quickly tell you where we're at. We're at the place in, in Luke chapter 5. It's called the calling of the disciples. And at this moment, it'll be Peter, James, and John. They're fishermen, and Jesus is going to call them to be disciples and eventually apostles of the Lord. So here we are. We're at their calling. Now, Jesus arrives on the scene. They're fishing. They haven't had much luck, and I, I would put my name on that. I never have good luck in fishing. I, I don't tell you, that's, that's just not my sport. They are fishing, and they really were not successful in it that particular night. But Jesus creates a conversation, and the Holy Spirit found it fit to put this story, this account and the gospel, because I believe it speaks to every one of us who feel unqualified at times. Let me begin reading. These verses won't come up on the screen yet, but let me just kind of set the scene. It says, one day Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesareth. The people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge there were two boats, one left by the fishermen. They were washing their nets. Verse number three, he got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon. Oh, I like that. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon. Jesus knew which boat belonged to Simon, and he got into the boat. Can I tell you, God wants to get in your boat. God wants to get into your stuff, and if you allow God, God will get into your stuff, and when you do, you'll begin to get into God's stuff. There's good stuff there, okay? Okay. There's something good for you. And he got into the boat, the one belonging to Simon Peter. It continues in verse number three. And then he asked him to put out from the shore, and he sat down and began to teach the people. He got into the boat, and he asked him, just know this. If you ever invite Jesus into your boat, he's going to ask you of something. If you ever ask Jesus into your life, he's going to ask you of something something of you. If you ever ask Jesus into your business, he's going to ask something of you. If you ever say, God, come in, he's going to ask something of you. There's something God wants to do in your life. It continues, verse number four in the scripture says, and when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, 
Master, <laughs> we've worked all night long and we haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. You know, it's all right to tell God life isn't working. That's what Simon Peter did. I worked all night long and it hasn't worked. Master didn't even know who he was. Really didn't understand who he was talking to. He just said, you need to know it's not working. Good news is you can tell God when life isn't working. Some of us need to say that. You know what, God? Right now, it's not working. Right now, things are not going the way I want them to go. Right now, our plans are not coming about the way I had hoped and the way I prayed. Let's continue on. Verse number 6. When they had done so, they put out in the deep, they cast out the net, such a large number of fish that the nets began to break. That speaks of overflow. How many of you want to move to empty to overflow? Doesn't that sound good? Oh, doesn't that sound good? Aren't you wanting a, uh, uh, an overflowing net? You, you want God to do something above your expectations? God's doing that. Verse number 7, so they signaled their partners, the other boat, to come over and help them. And they came and filled their boats up so that they, they began to sink. It was so abundant. Do you know I've watched God do that? I've watched God advance people from, from shrinking to abundance. I've, asked, I've watched God take people from just getting by to just promoted far beyond what they could ever imagine. I think about a man in our church. Right as COVID started, he opened up a new business. And I heard people whisper, you know what, this is not a time to be opening my, when everything is shutting down, he's opening up. But he got a word from the Lord. I spoke to him sometimes, he said, you know what, it's going so good. It's going so good that, that we're looking at opening a second and a third site. You know what, God has a way of filling the net. Isn't that good news? He can just do that. Jesus never intended for us to be frayed, weary, frustrated, hurt, wounded, lame, whining, complaining, beat up and beat down all the time. He never intended that. So let's go on. Now, now here's the verses that I'm going to unpack tonight. Verse 8 and 9, two verses. They're going to come up on the screen because I want you to see this. Is, I set the scene. Now you know what's going on. Now verse 8 and 9, here's what happened. When Peter saw this, what? The nets were full. He fell down at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. In other words, I'm unqualified. I don't deserve this. And some of us think that. There's some of us, we haven't asked God because we don't feel worthy. We don't feel qualified. We don't dare try because God couldn't and wouldn't use me. We feel unqualified. But let's go on to verse number 9. For he had, con he had all of his companions were astonished at the catch of fish had taken. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. In other words, you feel unqualified but I'm going to qualify you. And I think there's many of us that share that emotion. God, you can't use me. And Jesus is saying, I'm going to do something for you. And from now on, you're going to, be, you're going to have a full net. From now on, you're going to watch God do great exploits in your life. There's a couple of thoughts I want to share with you. So much we can mine out of the verses. But let me bring it down to a few things. Number one. I see that Jesus starts where we quit. Jesus starts where we quit. Verse number five. They've worked all night long and have caught nothing. He did the night shift. <laughs> he was working the night shift. We worked all night long and we've caught nothing. Zilch, we've come up with nothing. We might as well quit. There's no, it's just not working out today. And you know what? Jesus starts where we quit. Jesus said, get in the boat, let's go out and I'm going to show you what I can do. And some of us, we've quit on that dream. We've given up on ourselves. And you need to know Jesus starts where you quit. When you said it can't, 
I've done everything. I've tried the first, the second. Three strikes, I am out. Be reminded, when you're down to nothing, God's up to something. God's doing something when you don't think he is. And there's one thing every one of us, self-included, we all have in common. What is that? We've all tried and we have failed. Yes, we've all tried and we have failed. Every one of us share that in common. As with Simon Peter, he tried and failed. In fact, it says he worked hard. I was caught by that. Worked, but it says he worked hard. So I was, I was doing a, a little bit of research in the, in the original language the Bible is written in, and that is the Greek. And I found out the word hard, worked hard, is actually a Greek word in the text. It was added. It didn't, the Holy Spirit didn't say he just worked. He worked hard. This is the same word that they would use if somebody was ever flogged or beaten. In other words, here's what Simon Peter is saying. I've worked, I've done my best, and I'm beat up. I have nothing more to give. There's nothing left inside of me. I tried. I gave it my best shot, but I'm beaten. Have you ever felt like that? You ever felt like you're just beat up and you have nothing more to give? God, when you, when you think you're beaten, God said you're not beaten. When you feel beat up, God says, but you're not beaten. God's going to step in. You and I need to know God's about to do something new in our lives. When Peter, when he said, I don't have anything left to give, oh, little did he know what Jesus was about to do. You see, God starts where you quit. God steps in when you say it can't work anymore. And God's about to do something new in your life. Your best selfie is yet ahead, amen? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Your best promotion is yet, to be, is yet to come down your way. There is something new God's going to do. Don't close the book. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. God's going to do something new in your life. And it says there in verse number five, I was caught by this. Simon Peter said, we've worked hard and we haven't caught anything, period. That ends the sentence. I haven't caught anything. I, I somehow sense, I somehow sense, it's not in the text, but there was something, there was something in Simon, Simon Peter said, I haven't caught anything. But he will say, but because you say so, I will. There was something at the end of that sentence that happened inside of him. I haven't caught anything. And it was almost like the Lord spoke to him. You haven't caught anything yet. God has a yet for you. You said it hasn't, it, I haven't got over it yet. I haven't got the promotion yet. I haven't got the breakthrough yet. I can't trust anyone yet. God's not done. He's about to do something new in your life. Just because you've been through a divorce doesn't mean God can't restore you and make you whole. Because you fumbled the football here doesn't mean you can't score a touchdown later on. What is God saying? He's saying when you're at the, at the end of your road that says dead end, God puts a U-turn for you. God has a U-turn. Can you think about the time God gave you a U-turn? He said it'll never happen. And God steps in. You think about those, those great moments in life, those things you say, God, I will never doubt you again because God stepped in and God had a U-turn moment for you. What? God just abruptly steps in our life. He just surprised, just kind of like he did to Simon Peter. He just got into his boat. Some of you, you're going to notice God's just going to step into your boat. He's not going to rock your boat. He's going to rock your world. He's going to do something new in your life. 
Get ready for the interruption of the Holy Spirit and the hope of God to come into your life because God starts where you stop, where you quit. Second of all, I want to share with you, try God's plan. Try God's plan. Verse number five. Jesus said, let's go out. Let's, let's go out. It was Simon Peter says, but Lord, I've worked hard. I'm beaten. I'm, I'm, I, I don't have anything left. I've toiled all night long. But did you notice that phrase in verse number five? But because you say so, I will let down the net. I caught that. <laughs> because you say so. <clears throat> now let me share with you. I grew up in our home. Sometimes I would question mom and daddy. I would, I would think I know about more about life than mom and daddy. And they would say, do something. I'd say, Ma, I don't think I have to do that. Why should I do that? They'd give directions. And in all of my wisdom of a 12 or 13-year-old or 14-year-old, I would push back. And they could sense the defiance. And sometimes I'd say, well, give me one good reason why I should do that. And my mom and dad had a phrase, five words. And it began with the word because. Some of you, some of you, your parents attended the same training school, right? You know what those five words are? Because I said so end of case. Because I said so, you do it. I was reading a parenting magazine the other day, and it caught my attention because it had that phrase, because I said so. And the parenting magazine said this, because I said so is actually an appropriate phrase. The key is for the parents to calmly, after you have given direction clearly and explained once you have given them the reason, then it's all right to say, because I said so. My mom and dad never read that magazine. <laughs> they, the, it was never in a calm fashion they explained. Or they never had a seminar with me, okay? They, they never had a group session. We never sit around and held hands and they heard the word, honey, let me explain to you all the ramifications of this and we want to guide you in that. Can I say, they, my, my mom could be at the stove cooking and doing something. Dad could be re reading the newspaper. It just came because I said so. What is it saying? When life isn't working, try it God's way. It's not working, Jesus. I've worked all night long. Then try it God's way. I want to put that in your heart. Try it God's way. There's something in your life you close the door on and you say, God can't use me. I want to invite you. Try it God's way. No excuses. No should ofs and could ofs. No if and and buts. No no excuses. No no going back and dredging up the past and and reminding God of failure. Communion settled that. It's paid for. That's been wiped off the record. He said, "Do something. Do something." Why? Because he said so. Why don't you move on? Because God said so. Why don't, you, why don't you try again because God said so? Why don't, you, why don't you go all out for God because he said so? Why don't you tie because God said so? Why don't you step in and say, God, I'm going to do life your way. I'm going to be the spiritual leader of the home. Why? Because God said so. There are moments in life in which God gives us what I'm going to call a pivot point. A pivot point. A moment which we change the trajectory of our life. Why? Because he said so. He said so. Pivot points, they're based upon faith and not feeling. Peter, he put out from the shore and he let down the net because Jesus said so, not because he felt like it. You can feel, you can sense in his heart, I, I, I've worked hard, I'm beaten. He didn't feel like it. 
There are times you don't go by how you feel. You just do it because in faith you believe God can do something. And in God's kingdom, disappointments don't get a vote on the will of God. Past hurt does not vote on the will of God. Your past failures, when it comes to your future, God never gives the past failure a vote on your future dreams. Isn't that good news? It's on faith, not on feelings. Number two, your pivot point requires moving beyond the present routine. I'm caught by that, verse number four. Simon Peter, he said, he said, I'll do so. And Jesus said, this time, go out into the deep. Well, what do you think Jesus said that? What do you think that's in the text, go out into the deep? I think we can safely extrapolate from that. Jesus is saying, don't go where you normally go. You normally go in the shallows. You normally go into waste deep water. I'm going to take you to a point you've never been before. Go out into the deep. Wait a minute, Jesus. I've not done that before. Jesus, I, 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 I've never shared my faith with a coworker. Jesus, I've never tithed. Jesus, I, I've, I've never put biblical principles to practice in my business. I, I've never done that before. It requires, pivot points require us doing something beyond our present routine. Peter was used to going into the sh shallows, and Jesus is saying, if you'll go beyond your routine, then God will do something new in your life. Number three, about a pivot point. Try the one thing that changes everything. Try the one thing that changes everything. What's the one thing God has been speaking to you? What's the one thing that's come up in the conversation of your heart in your life? Do this and it could change everything. What's the one thing that you sense God has talked to you about? God has dealt with you. The thing that you know on the inside, you, when you, every time you get close to God, every time you, you feel like you're on the verge of going from here to there, that pivot point, that one thing God brings your attention back to. Is it, is it a, a habit or routine you need to surrender to the Lord? Is it a new way of thinking? Is it, is, it, is it giving God's word preeminence in that? Is it giving God first choice? What, what's that one thing? What's the one thing that will change everything? And that's what Jesus has said, Jesus told him to do. Try God's way. And number three, as we're going to go into a moment of prayer, we learn that believing is doing. Believing is doing. Verse number 10, Jesus will say, from now on, you will, you will fish for people. No longer, Simon Peter, your life is going to be measured by what you catch in Galilee and you sell in the market. Your life is going to be different. You're going to catch people. It's just interesting that Jesus, after this great lesson, he did not say, he did not say, oh, from now on you're going to believe and not doubt. He didn't say that. He didn't come in and you're a believer now. Go, go, go and just be reminded of this. I taught you a new strategy. I taught you a great lesson. It wasn't about believing for you see in the Bible, there is no separation between believing and doing, but there is for us. Yes, we separate believing and doing. We can say 
I'm a, I'm a hearer of the word, a believer of the word, but I'm not a doer of the word. The Bible doesn't make that separation. The Bible doesn't give us permission to ever say that we believe and not do. In fact, there's one whole book in the Bible who is the stepbrother of Jesus. That's James. He got something from Jesus. When he got something from his stepbrother. And he will write an entire book on this, that faith without works doesn't work. You cannot believe and not do. If you believe, you, whatever you believe, you've got to do. So what, what are you believing God to do for you? Then start doing that because we don't separate believing and doing. And the reason many of us fall into that trap is because we feel unqualified. I don't think God would do that for me. And the calling of Simon Peter reminds us when Jesus gets into your boat, the moment he steps into the boat, you'll say as Simon Peter, I'm unqualified. But Jesus will say, but from now on, you're going to fish for people. From now on. And I call us to our from now on. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we begin this series, I do so with keen awareness that every one of us have tried and failed and we have inadequacies. Some have thought that God could never bless them financially abundantly. Some have never thought that they could ever finish that degree. It feels, it, it, it just feels so foreboding to them. They say they're not, they're not smart enough, or intelligent enough, something enough. Some feel that God couldn't use them, that God could not work with them. They, they feel like a broken vessel. They're just surviving in the kingdom, and that's not what God planned for them. And every one of us, we are like Simon Peter. We feel unqualified. But God, you qualify us by Jesus. The communion reminded us it's paid in full. And I speak spiritual confidence into people. There's some who have never taken growth track because they just say, what's the use? God can't do it for me. Some have never applied for that promotion for fear of being turned down. Some have never stepped out in that daring change of life habit that could, that could make a difference in their life because they just feel like, it would never work for them. I pray, God, the confidence of the Holy Spirit upon your people. I speak into them, God, the confidence to become in the kingdom what you purpose them to be. I speak blessing into them. I speak spiritual confidence into them. And I pray, God, your best for them. In Jesus' name, amen.